This is the uh, uh, meeting of the Blueberry uh, Library Board of Trustees, May 18th. Um, time is 11.04. This meeting is being recorded. Um, and I will call the roll of the, um, the members. As I call your name, please uh, respond in the affirmative. Um, Dick Raven. Here. Margaret Grimes. Present. Alex Burke. Here. Uh, and I'm the chair of uh, the three. Uh, and Jean Ackley Here. is the director of the library. Here. Uh, absent this moment is uh, Terry Lickeris, one of the, uh, the trustees. Um, all right, the rest of the script goes. Good morning. This meeting uh, of the Library Board of Trustees is being conducted remotely consistent with the Governor, with Governor Baker's executive order of March 12th, 2020, due to the current state of emergency in the Commonwealth due to the outbreak of the COVID-19 virus. In order to mitigate the transmission of the COVID-19 virus, we, uh, we have been advised and directed by the Commonwealth to suspend public meetings. And as such, the governor's order suspends the requirement of the open meeting law to have all meetings in a publicly accessible physical location. Further, all members of public bodies are allowed and encouraged to participate remotely. The order, which can be found posted uh, with the agenda materials for this meeting allows public bodies to meet entirely remotely so long as reasonable public access is afforded so that the public can follow along with the deliberations of the meeting. Ensuring public access does not ensure public participation unless, unless the participation is required by law. And this meeting um, will uh, allow public comment. After uh, we've had an opportunity to uh, discuss the issues, we will open it up to anybody who is participating and listening in who would like to uh, make uh, uh, for this uh, For this meeting, the uh, Board of Trustees is convening by teleconference, video conference via Zoom, as posted on the agenda uh, on the Sounds website. So I think we can get started. Uh, that's the script. Okay, and Terry is here. Uh, I'm gonna call her Terry Litteris. Here. Okay, Terry's here. So we have all members of the uh, board of this present. So. All right, uh, the first item on the agenda, uh, the second item actually is approval of minutes. Margaret, do you have them from the last meeting? I do. Okay, if you would please read them. Sure, the meeting adjourned at 11.02 a.m. on May 7th. Susan Noyes, Dick Passeri, Dick Raven, Terry Latourst, Alex Burke, Jean Ackerley, Margaret Grimes were present. The board unanimously voted to approve the minutes with amendments from the February 18th meeting. That was the most recent meeting prior to that. And the board had a discussion about um, the opening, the eventual opening of the Newburytown Library. Anyone, anyone want to make a motion on that? I move. Wave, your hand, wave your hand at me. You know, Dick Raven is making the motion. I move it. Chapter minutes. Is read. Okay, Alex is seconding it. Okay, motion made and seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. Okay. All right, Jean. I'm assuming there is uh, no director's report, or is there? I no. I just figured okay. I'd send no, those fine. documents. That's fine. Okay. All right, so the new businesses, plans for staff returning to work in the building. That's A, B, and this, they all kind of will run together, I, I would think, uh, well, at least the first two. Plans for re reopening the building to the public. So, all right, Gene, you had sent out a draft of, uh, you know, phases, and today yeah. we received, the, uh, did everybody get a copy of the, uh, uh, Reopening plan from uh, Mike Riley. Yeah. yeah. Sent yes. This morning, I think yes. that that answered a lot of questions for me. And, uh, mm -hmm. So I'm very happy to see that the town has uh, has a very uh, 
a thoughtful plan in place and uh, given time, obviously Mike has given time and consideration to this. Um, Gene, I'll turn it to you. Um, let's talk about uh, the draft that you had submitted and uh, what your thoughts are in this process. Can I ask a question? Sure, sure. you can. That's Terry. Terry Littress is asking the question. Um, was plexiglass barrier installed in the library also? Yes. It has been, yes. Okay, thanks. Yeah. At yeah. both the, the uh, circulation desk and the children's circulation desk. Okay. Yeah, yeah. actually, I had I had written to, to James Surrett, uh last week to ask him that, and he did respond uh, Friday, which shame on me. I didn't look at my email until this morning. So yeah, he told me that it had been installed last week. So, yeah. Um. So uh, yeah. So basically, after I got that. I, I settled down a little bit <laughs> um, and I've, you know, there's still quite a lot of details to uh, iron out, but I feel like we've got a process at least for opening to the staff. Um, I really have hardly even looked at, looked beyond that, except to basically say, and we put out in the, in our newsletter on Friday, um, that we will be starting curbside pickup on June 3rd, unless something changes, you know, with the state. Um, and um, so, you know, I, I've got all my notes for, for Mike Riley, who I'm meeting with here this afternoon. And if anybody wants to be on a phone call or whatever, you can, but, you know, no pressure. Um, <laughs> So it's just a question of, of plugging holes and getting things in place. I guess the, you know, making sure we've got wipes and, and Purell dispensers and all of that stuff. Um, my biggest um, hurdle, it seems right now, is the uh, HVAC. So I sent out the stuff from Fred Doherty last week, I think, I hope. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. And there was a lot of information there, <laughs> obviously. Yes. So um, I guess I was hoping you would, you know, discuss, basically he summarized. I mean, I thought the thing that the, the slides that he sent from the <clears throat> webinar he took were great, but he basically summarized in his email what he thought we should focus on. So I think the trustees should probably talk about that, especially in, in um, especially because his last bulleted item, I think, was that it will raise costs for running, yeah. running the HVAC. So I have not spoken with him since I got that. Um, I would ideally, I feel, we've got, Marsha and I are both here today. We've got windows open everywhere. But tomorrow, most of the staff will be here and we won't really have the HVAC system set up yet. I don't think I'm not totally right. certain he can make changes from remotely. <clears throat> I'm assuming he can, but I don't know that for sure. Oh, well, he should be able to. I hope so. That's, that, that's what the energy management system should be. Uh, he, he's managing that system. He should be able to adjust it remotely. First of all, you're getting an air exchange in the building now, which is consistent with state law. Um, it should be, it's on now. I'm not really hearing it on now, but I had set it for, um, once staff came back in the building, I think I had set it for eight to four, something like that as occupied. Well, I, I think, you know, he's talk about running it, um, uh, you know, at least two hours before the person, uh, before you're going right. to occupy the building. Right. So, in the air exchanges that it's currently doing, if you do nothing to it, it's consistent with the requirements uh, of the state. Right? right. Okay. So what we're looking, what you're looking to do, is increase the air exchange. If I understand you correctly. Yes. Yes. So do we, do we know what kind of a percentage we want to do that to? It's Fred, I, I guess I can't remember everything Fred wrote. Uh, do we know yeah, what he said? He said, um, he said something about bringing a lot more outside air up to a minimum of 100%, but he goes on to say, I'm not sure that the heating or cooling can maintain space temperature. Yeah, that's 
Yeah. I would I would be concerned about bringing it to a hundred percent. Right. Yeah. So. Um, Especially, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. I mean, because so it is, it, it does become heating and cooling issues. Right. Uh, if you're bringing in 100% outside air continuously, you now have to adjust your temperature internally in order to make the place comfortable for people to be in, even if it's just staff initially. Right. And, you know, if you're going to bring in 100% air, why not just turn the HVAC off and open all the windows? Yeah, which right. his slide said don't do that you don't want to do that because no. you, you want to send out some air right because opening the windows is not you're not getting an air exchange all you're doing is you're letting fresh air in you may let a little air out what your, your heating and ventilation system is doing is fans in all of the duct work that is pulling the air out of the building and there's other fans that are pulling air into the building so you have them going through your mixes upstairs and you know uh i think Fred has to come up with a recommendation of what percentage of outside here we want to bring in. Yeah. Before we, uh, I, I personally would have a problem with 100%. Dick Raven has a question or comment. I don't know if I looked at, I sent out that document about, about risk factors, the link to a, a, a webpage some days ago. Mm -hmm. Yes. That had some test cases and some studies on what had happened in infection in a restaurant in particular. There was a man who was infected and at a table with nine people. And the restaurant had tables in kind of two horizontal rows. And oh, yes. both sides of him who weren't at his table got infected from the airflow. Mm -hmm. Circulating back and forth. Nobody who wasn't in that airflow was infected. Right. And you know, that would be the other issue for me, which is moving this air through the building with fans and not only be moving healthy air around, but also moving unhealthy air around. This is yeah. be particularly true uh, when people stop wearing masks, if, if, mm -hmm. you know, I mean, because this is gonna be an ongoing problem. Is there gonna be little brush fires and maybe even bigger than brush fires of this cropping up. And so we have to think about that as well, I think. So what about for right now though? It, with, are you less concerned with people wearing masks? Cause I had the same thought, Dick, but. I, I, well, I mean, obviously, I don't know the system, and I'm not an HVAC expert. I'm just using some comments. Right. Yeah. So that's the level of my expertise. I have <laughs> my feeling is that probably, you know, every you know, the mask on mask, it's probably going to be sufficient. Mm -hmm. um, our, you know, the the protocols that came just this morning that you sent us from town hall are gonna require temperature taken by every person in the building before they enter the building. There are all kinds of things that will minimize, minimize, if not eliminate, the possibility of infection for those who are working in the building before we get started. Yeah, I, that wasn't mentioned at the staff meeting at all, the temperature taking, so I was very surprised to see that. You know, I'm assuming it's going to happen in the library as well. I don't know that for sure. Well, you're meeting with Mike this afternoon at okay. two. All right. So you should get some clarification. Right. <clears throat> right. I think, I think at this point about the, um, the HVAC, I think we I think we have to rely on Fred to make a recommendation in terms of how we move air around. Um, you know, we're not going to add fans into the building by any means to move air around. There are, there are already fans that are a part of the, the HVAC system. In yeah. the work. And that's what does move the year. But it's, you know, it's pulling it up towards the uh, events uh, that are high up. Um, so, uh, and a good point. We don't want to be moving bad air around the building. So, we want to be trying to get the. Uh, you know what we're doing. And, you know, instead of just making assumptions, if we can think through all the steps, it seems to me, you know, with, with the on. I mean, there's not tons that, that I'm aware of, of data yet about how to do this. There's just yeah. Yeah. assumptions. So we just have to think through it as carefully as we can. So like I said, we'll rely on the expert in terms of... Uh, how many people will be in the library at one time, employees, initially? One? Um, 
No, there's two of us here today. Um, tomorrow, because I had hoped to sort of have a little bit of a, a brainstorming about um, procedures and everything, um, there will be, I think, well, there were going to be five, but Marsha's mom uh, needs surgery, so there will be four of us. A little bit staggered, but I'm, you know, I'm working on, we're probably going to get Erin moved into the little room here because she's sort of in that line of traffic for everybody going to the staff room. Um, and we're going to move Pauline to the small program room. So we'll move her workstation in there, um, which I think will make a lot of sense. Uh, I'll have to get a new receipt printer and scanner for Pauline, but she may be in there for a good long while. I mean, we may be doing, uh, what are they calling it? Uh, like out, I, some sort of outdoor service, like window service or something where, um, you know, for children's, like if people want to pick up a kit about exploring nature or whatever, you know, we may be able to provide access through the meeting room door. These are all things that are down the road, uh -huh. but I think that will be a good location for Pauline and that'll keep her and Katie distant. And then um, Aaron set up in this small room. So that just leaves Marsha and Jane, which is a little, and um, Ellen when she's here, just sort of, we just have to stagger them around. So, um, you know, Erin will probably continue to work from home. She has an all day webinar today. It was supposed to be an in-person thing, but now it's a webinar. She'll probably be home um, on Wednesday. I don't know how that's, if that's going to be an issue with the town in terms of personnel, but if you all are supportive of that through this kind of, you know, trying to get through the weeds process, um, I would appreciate that because we just don't have all our ducks in a row, you know, including the HVAC. And then the other thing that, so I don't forget it, that, that Fred talked about is um, the, all the stuff about cleaning filters and all of that. I don't know if you got a chance to look over that. Install better yep. air filters and the air handlers, <coughs> which seems like that might be something that would be important. Um, that, that, that is, Jean, that is done on an annual, or maybe a semi-annual right. basis. So right. it's, the, filth, the filth is uh, uh, relatively new um, and really haven't had anybody in the building for uh, over two months. So right. I wouldn't be overly concerned about that. Is that something in the next time we change filters, do we upgrade the filters? Probably, uh, you know, uh, something, a uh, conversation to have with James and with uh, with Fred. Uh, but again, the building has not been used for two months. So um, I wouldn't be overly concerned about the filters. Isn't it a question though of um, them, them functioning? At their best, not necessarily getting out the virus if it's here right now, which doubt it's very doubtful yep. it is. But is it about the building? The building, the building settings have been lower than they normally would be, so the amount of air that's flowing has been less than it normally would. Different temperatures, so, yeah. The, it hasn't been functioning as though the building is in use, which would in fact you're getting more filtration at that point. My understanding, anyway. Again, I'm no expert on this. It's yeah. been a part of the conversation with Fred. I don't think we need to delay doing things while we're waiting for filters to be changed. I think we're still moving forward um, you know, with, with the things you're talking about, which makes sense. You know, uh, let's move these folks around and separate them. And, uh, but in the same token, you know, we're, we're looking to have the, uh, uh, the HVAC issues uh, identified and addressed. Okay. That, that's part of it. All right. Um, One of the th I read the blog briefly this morning. I didn't have a chance to dig in, and they they published kind of an advanced copy of the governor's new directives, which were just finished over the weekend. And one of the things I glanced on said that you know offices are going to be the offices that are going to be reopening are going to have reduced staff by percentages, and that doesn't seem to have filtered into the towns. Uh, directive at all, and I'm wondering whether that's something we need to think about. Could you repeat that, Dick? I'm sorry, Erin just texted me with some updates from uh, Governor Baker, so I'm sorry. 
if you could repeat that. The, in the Globe this morning, I didn't have a chance to really drill down. There was an article about Governor Baker uh, reopening uh, applications that just finalized over the weekend. <laughs> and in them, for the offices that are reopening, and these are offices uh, that have no, you know, minimal or no contact with, with outsiders, just offices that are reopening, there were percentages of employees, you know, uh, and houses of worship, you know, can only open with 40% and offices with like 20%. I forget what the numbers were. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm saying that those percentages don't seem to have filtered into the town's directive. Um, perhaps because the governor's thing was, you know, the town finished their thing before the governor. Um, yeah. Okay. So I think, you know, we need to look at what the governor said today before you have, you know, and see whether there's questions we need to raise with the town to make sure the town is doing what he said. And they may be, I just don't know. Yeah, and, and I, I, would, I would think that maybe the town would modify its uh, phasing uh, accordingly. You know, if they're now getting different information from the governor. And, and indeed, and it may be that for tiny businesses like our library with very small staff, the percentages don't matter the same way they yeah. do offices, but I want to make sure that we're we're com com uh, in compliance with state regulations in terms of how we reopen the libraries. Right, I and I, my hope is with um, this the task force that there are uh, recommendations specific to libraries. Just very quickly, what Aaron told me is phase one, May 25th for curbside pickup and delivery only, phase two, browsing inside the library with restrictions, but I don't know when phase two starts. I don't have that date, so. I don't think they know until they see how phase one goes and whether there's a lot Is of- Is that, uh, yeah, okay. I wasn't sure about that, okay. I bet that would make sense. Yeah. yeah. I wondered um, procedurally where returned items are gonna be stored and handled. Um, um, you know, they aren't even taking plastic bottles back at the grocery store anymore, so. Right. Um, before we came up with the idea to put Aaron in the little room, I was thinking possibly in there. Um, I'm not certain. They may go in the front. They may go to the back. You know, we, that's all stuff that staff and I are going to talk about. The bins, you know, where we put things that we check in and then have to go in the delivery, which there isn't right now, but we're going to be loading up bins, obviously, as we start accepting returns. The bins I'm not going to have back here where it's all kind of congested and people have to go back and forth. I'm going to put those out probably over by the magazines. So um, the quarantine stuff will probably be toward the, the, the young adult section, you know, for now. But there was very few. There were only five books <laughs> we put out on Friday that deliveries could start. Um, so, But there were only five books. But um, I, I'm not sure... Did you all get the MailChimp? The, I mean, the email, sorry. <laughs> the email that went out on Friday? The I, newsletter, I the new, newsletter, I meant to say. Did you see in there, Alex, that, that we were accepting returns? Yeah, I think it got yeah, lost. We're there, it went right through, so. Yeah, I think it got lost in the text. <clears throat> so I think we'll put it out on social media today. I, I've been really looking at everything I get from the library uh, trustee group, state group, and all that. Um, I don't think I got it. Oh, you're, yeah. but you're on our. I don't think I got a newsletter either. I, I, I know I didn't. Really? Yeah. Well, that's something to find out about, huh? I don't take it personally. No, I don't. I don't either. <laughs> I, 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 I say thank you. <laughs> we were all collaborating on it late Thursday, and it was supposed to go out Friday morning, so we'll see what happens. The other issue I'm sure you're going to talk about with staff is is, how, is the the uh, staff bathroom. Oh, it, yes. It read my mind. Because you're all going to be keeping social distance from each other, except you're all going to be sharing that small space. Well, so. hopefully we won't be. The children's will use the children's, I mean, well, children's. Pauline and Katie will use the children's bathroom. 
Some of us will use the staff bathroom, and my hope is for some of us to use two of the public buildings, public bathrooms, um, while we're closed. And Fred Davis is supposed to show today with Mike, which I'm just really happy about. Um, so we can discuss all, you know, the bathrooms and how many bathrooms they're going to be able to keep clean and disinfected and, and all of that. So um, that will hopefully help there. But, you know, in it's, I mean, what I do when I come here is I take a paper towel and I rip it up into little pieces. And I, everything I touch, I use that paper towel and that little piece of paper towel and throw it out. There's something sort of like that in here, I think. Does anybody remember seeing that? In Riley's? Yeah. yeah. Yes, yeah. there is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because it's, you know, it's either that or you have to wipe down everything after you use it. It's, right. it's a yeah. little confusing. So, you know, we'll figure it out as we go. Um, I should mention too that Doug Janfrin called me on... Friday, and he came in over the weekend, the fire chief, and with elect some sort of electrostatic machine, did all the door handles and the all of that, which is great. But you know, unless it's going to be done every day, right? <laughs> I don't know what that really every, Right, not just every day after anyone Sorry. touches it. I know. Yeah. Yeah. It's a it could be a matter of thirty seconds or a matter of hours, depending I on that. I just wanted to add that I pulled up the newsletter, and in the second sentence or the third sentence, you you explain that we are happy to accept returns of all materials. Right, so. but it it was kind of like instead of putting it out there front and center, now accepting returns, it was kind of in the text, which you know some people might just go right yeah. by. Right. Yeah. Well, yeah, it might be a good idea to just do what yeah. you said. But anyway, just so you know, you it is there. <laughs> so good job. <laughs> I, I guess thinking about um, you know some of the the other issues. Um, I, I, I went roaming through there last week and took a bunch of pictures that uh, I sent some. I tried to send them all and it just wouldn't go because there's just too many. Um, we have all that upholstered furniture that's in there that can't be wiped down, so that probably all has to be moved someplace. Um, my Recollection, there was 24 pieces. Um, again, I measured all of the tables. Uh, at best, you know, like the table we meet at, in order to keep a six-foot distance on that, you can put two people at that table um, at either end, basically. Um, and the rest of it, uh, you know, uh, maybe one person is a, the one in the, uh, uh, the genealogy room, the local history room, you can probably put a couple of people in there if you even want to let people be sitting at tables. You can eliminate all the chairs. And it's another option, too. Uh, the computers, um, you know, there's, there were, there's, there's four, uh, two, two, uh, just outside the genealogy room. Um, you know, you can probably put one at one end and on one side at the other end, and that's just about six feet. Yeah. You've got two computers that can be used there. The children's room. Same thing, one at either end there gives you about six feet, a little maybe a little more than six feet. There. But at max, you're going to get two of them uh, usable down there. So, uh, so those are some of the things that as I was wandering around. One of the things to minimize the touching of doors, the interior doors uh, can be kept open when the building is in use, so that the only thing that's getting touched is unfortunately uh, they're not touching the other doors as they commence. Now, um, things to think about, uh, yeah, going forward. And moving the furniture is no big deal. We can get that done without any difficulties. Well, one thing you had said, um, putting it in the meeting room, in which yeah. if we have to, we have to, but um, we had had some thought, Katie, especially of, well, a couple of things, of perhaps putting some computers in there, uh, those carols in there. Mm -hmm. um, or some place for people that will be taking using the two laptops that I um, purchased. Okay. Well, the, um, the room is big enough to to do that as well as. Okay, uh, alternatively, Jean, I mean, where would you store the stuff? I know. You it? You're not putting it upstairs, that's for sure. No. <laughs> and you've got yeah. town election coming up on the 16th of June, Dick. Using that. Oh, room. oh, oh that's right, and they do use that room, so yeah. Absolutely. Oh, God, yes, I forgot all about. Forgot that. about that. Alex. I didn't. 
Margaret. Thank you. Oh, yeah. that's right. Which yeah. date again? It's the 16th, right? Yeah. 16 June, yeah. Forgot about good point, that. Good point. Good wow. Point. It can be worked around. As I was Hours are limited, noon to six. Uh, you need the whole room. Yeah. Yeah. Room yeah it, again, distancing yep. among yep. the uh, check in, the check out, the ballot, and all that kind of thing. Yep. So. Yep. Uh, maybe it's uh, we cordon off. Uh, the other thought I had originally was that back corner uh, beyond the, um, uh, the genealogy room, we cordon that off and kind of store stuff back there. It doesn't look good, but uh, it may be what we have to do in the short yeah. term. Mm -hmm. And actually, back corner. Bring the chairs uh, over, Dick. Yeah, no, exactly. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we could do that. And actually, to store one location. Um, and just kind of um, put tables across there so that it becomes, uh, you know, an area that people don't have access to. Right. Okay, but that's something to uh, think about as we're going forward. Yeah. And it's a good point, Alex. Yeah. Phase two, yeah. Yeah. Phase two. Yeah. yeah. And, and hopefully, because I, you know, in my mind, those, we won't be having people in the building on the 16th. Oh, right, right. We'll yeah. still be doing curbside. Terry. Terry had I a question. I just wondered, yeah, well, Comment, you know that UV wands that people use now to be able to disinfect. I Haymark or Schlammer sells them. They're like not quite two hundred dollars, and that's the wand that kills everything. I would think that that might be a good investment for us because. You wouldn't have to worry as much about the upholstered furniture or anything like that. You can't put it on your skin, but you can put it on any surface. It could go, you could use it in a bathroom to basically clean the air and clean surfaces. Huh. Well, Riley's, Riley's plan discusses that. Yeah. yeah. He says he has have been procured and provided for each facility. Right. I think he, I think, because Mike said, told me he had an idea about the books. So I think he's going to try and sell me on using those on the books. Okay. So we'll see. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, another, I guess I should um, mention on a personnel level um, that Katie has childcare issues. <laughs> um, so like this week, she's in here four days, I mean, four hours each day, and the rest she'll be at home. Um, I don't know what's coming down with the state in terms of people that, you know, have to work, but there's no place for their kids to go. I don't know, ha has anybody heard anything? Margaret, have you heard anything? Nope. Yeah, so. They may be talking about it, you know, he may be addressing that right now because going back to work means as you said, having a place for your children. And if they're exactly. not in school, which yeah. they're not in school. So right. maybe, uh, hopefully, I would imagine as we speak, the governor is addressing that, but I have heard zero. And she's got her kids enrolled in summer camp for, I think, July, but we don't know what's going to happen there either. I don't even know if that's going to happen. No, yeah, I, doubtful. Yeah, I have two grandchildren that go to daycare, and their daycare was supposed scheduled. One of them was supposed scheduled to open June 29th. Wow! So, and we'll see if that even happens. So, uh, oh, exactly. Plus, plus the parents uh, concerned about sending them to daycare too. So. Yeah, right. So you know that that's among the other personnel issues. You know, the at least this week and possibly next, but definitely this week. You know, some staff will still be working from home, you know, especially part of the time and especially Erin, because basically everything she does, she can do from home. Um, we're not on full, full schedule. So I just want you all to be aware of it in, in case there's any pushback, you know. Yeah. Um, from, yeah. Well, oh, yeah. I met Sam, Katie's son. Oh, he's I did the he's readings. Good. He was the sweetest. He, they're wonderful kids and they used to come in here when she got stuck. Right. Well, she, was, she was there last week when I was there because she was uh, she was taping uh, uh, Jane doing a reading and she had Sam with her. But Sam had this, he, he was sitting outside the building. Yeah, he was not in the building. So. Yeah. Well, when she taped me, we used my neighbor's three season porch, which is 
huge. So there were uh-huh. plenty of social distancing. And I had some prepackaged cookies that he could open himself and apple juice that he could open himself and keep uh-huh. all untouched. And he was a happy camper. Yeah. <laughs> Just to get out of the house. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so, that, you know, these are all things, obviously, that have to be ironed out, not just in our workplace, but in workplaces all over the country. So, yeah. Right, yeah. I'm sure other town offices have very similar scenarios. Yeah. So, uh-huh. it's, so, of course, they should stay at home if no one can take care of their children. And right. if they can do the work from home like Erin can, if it's not yeah. a child care issue, then she absolutely, that's where she should be. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and I would think that Katie would be doing since we're not going to be bringing kids into the building anyway, a lot of what she's already doing, she can continue that mode of providing the service that she's doing now. And that's another thing going forward. What have we learned through this whole um, video presentation, if you will, that we want to continue going forward? To? That's top of the now. Now we've learned how this, we've, Participated in a number of them. Uh, it's been great. I love the trivia night. The, the cooking night was was terrific. Uh, you know, get listen to some Otha from the BPL. And there's something tonight. I think at the BPL too. Uh, you know, so you know, it's been uh, exposing us to a lot of technology. Shows. Yeah, yeah. I, I haven't even been able to put my brain on more programming, but um, uh, I'll get there. Understood. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the, the key things, are, uh, I think Mike's listing here is really very, very helpful and, and lays the, you know, the, the, the path of, of how to go about doing a lot of this stuff. And then we just adjust and modify as we go forward and, and adapt to, to how the circumstances present them. Uh, think about um, moving furniture around, making... Uh, yeah, you know, I guess do we do we have period are gonna have periodicals and newspapers available to people going forward? Yeah. Who knows? Has, has anybody I mean I haven't seen anything in any of the you know, I did see one thing, I can't even remember where it was, but they were eliminating them uh in one library. So you know Yeah, I my take is that we won't do newspapers and magazines. Okay. You know, and then we have to figure out what people can browse. So that's yeah. you know that's all stuff down the road, really. So, okay. So, what, um, what do you what do you need from us at this point to start this first phase? Um, just the support that you're already providing. Your, you know, your awareness about the personnel issues. Um, and I, I think you know, it's kind of up to the staff and I for this this first phase. To be honest. Okay. We don't have to start moving furniture yet, except when we're moving workstations. Right. Um, I, you know, like I said, it's I'm just trying to focus on these two weeks. Okay. With the staff then, starting to put their minds on curbside and what's that's going to look like with tons of input that's coming our way from MVLC and other library yeah. organizations. So. Okay. How about the other local library? Have you and those two. I have another meeting with the local libraries on Thursday to see where everybody's at. So we're going to try and coordinate when we do each um, service, but realizing that each municipality may, may you know, proceed differently. But I think it's all going to be pretty close to that first week in June. <clears throat> Excuse me, when, when everybody starts doing curbside. Did, did you meet with them? Go ahead, go ahead, uh, Margaret. Is Jean, is it, I'm just thinking about just this first phase of the fact that you're receiving returned materials. Is it, is the signage clear? I know some patrons probably have never used that little outside box and just want to make sure that it's obvious where they right. put it. I mean, yeah. Yeah. I'm working on that. Okay. And even when we do open, yeah. um, we will still have returns going there. They won't sure. be bringing them. Yeah. Right. Yeah, just as long sure. as it's clear. I just, I mean, I know where it is because right. I use it, but there are plenty of patrons who just have never, right. don't never, know never. it exists. Exactly. So I would just ensure that there's proper signage and it's yes, clear. Good suggestion. Yeah. I think you've been doing a great job, Jean. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Really a lot of work. Oh, this is, uh, you yeah. know, 
been providing service. Uh, you know, that's the, that's been the key. People have accessing us differently. I said, you know, utilizing the library differently. And yay, Gene. <laughs> <laughs> well, yay, you guys, too. <laughs> yeah. right. I really appreciate the support. So is there any, anything that we, do we have to vote on this phase one reopening draft or are we just? I don't know what, you know, what you think. I mean, there's really, there's not, there, I, I mean, I went through it this morning and again, I'm only staying in phase one. I'm not even yeah, looking yeah. at phase two. Oh, no, absolutely. Yeah. Um, it's, just, right. you know, there's just a few changes. Um, you know, masks and gloves are available for staff who need them. Well, we're going to wear masks and we're going to wear gloves for the book job. Mike doesn't seem to think we need them. He doesn't, he's not big on them for everything else because he thinks it gives people a false sense of, you know, basically the same as having your hands. You're, you're moving right. the virus everywhere. Sure. But, but for the book job, uh, you know, I'm absolutely going to insist on that. And staff are scheduled, staff are scheduled to address the need for distancing and workspaces. So, you know, for this week, we've already discussed that staff will be scheduled and staggered. I'm hoping the same will be true for next week. And then after that, you know, we might have to revisit that when we start doing curbside. Mm -hmm. um, but I think, you know, the, I think the staff in the town, I think they're there for their regular schedules. So that's, you know, that's just why I wanted to make sure we're all aware. I don't know that for sure, but that's what it looks like. Um, and they're all distancing. They, you know, most of them are in their own offices, with the exception of Leslie, the town clerk, and her assistant, and the board of uh, assessors, and his assistant. But I think they're moving people into different offices all over the, the building. So, you know, while we're in that process, it's just very helpful if we can have some flexibility with the schedule. Um, so as far, you know, if, if you've, I don't know, I don't know if we need an official plan. No, I think, uh, you know, I think the thing that Mike put out is, uh, is the town directive and that's what, uh, you know, do we have to vote that we're going to follow that? I think it's just, it's, you know, I don't think it's necessarily requires a vote. It's a directive from the town of how we're going to proceed. Yeah. Where, you know, that's. I mean, it's, you know, in terms of the information, the bulleted information, I suppose it, you know, it gives, I don't know. I don't know if the town wants to know that we're doing all those things or if it's just really for our well, own. I, I think whatever we do, we should inform them so that they're in the mix. I don't want a surprise down the line. So, oh, I didn't know you did that. But, you know, right. no, let's, everything, all of the decisions that are made, all of the action that are taken and outlined, <clears throat> He should be sent to Mike and to, and to Tracy so that they know, you know what's happening and that it is different than what they may be doing in, in town hall. Well, in that in that sense, then, I think it would make sense to uh, approve the phase one. <laughs> and, you know, if you don't mind doing it one phase at a time. Oh, absolutely, because that's all, that's all we can deal with. Yeah. And it, so, you know, you can look it over and s see if there's anything you're not comfortable with or want to change. It does say some staff will still work from home. Um, it basically, you know, all programming is virtual. Uh, staff will begin to ready building for patron access in phase two, curbside pickup only, provide services via email and phone calls. Um, so really, nothing really has changed. I would just say, um, Masks and gloves will be worn by staff when appropriate. I mean, this is a really ad hoc way of doing this, obviously, but because we're under. What does well appropriate mean? Um, when is it not appropriate? Well, I was thinking mostly for gloves when I said that, but. Um, so just be specific about it then. I mean, right. Just the masks should be worn at all times and gloves when unloading or whatever, the dealing with materials. Okay. Do so you think specificity and so there isn't a, you yep. know, look at a contract, everything that's vague gets misinterpreted. So. Yep. Um, I think masks should be worn in common areas because I know that's what they're doing at town hall. 
like me sitting here in my office right now, I don't have to. If I go out, I will. But um, what they were saying, the other, I'm sorry. I think, I think that's what Mike's. Uh, that's what Riley's. Yeah, it does. Does it stay in common areas? <clears throat> yeah. Yeah. When yeah. when a, <clears throat> when six feet. <clears throat> excuse me. When a distance of six feet cannot be maintained. Yeah. Maintained. Okay, so I can right. use his wording if you're comfortable yeah. with that. Yeah. Okay. And um, gloves will be worn when um, unloading the book drop. Okay. All right. So you want to approve the phase one as uh, presented by Gene with the uh, uh, amended uh, language? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Alex is making the motion. Anybody seconding it? Terry is uh, seconding the motion. Aye. 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 Uh, Aye. Unanimously approved. So phase one with the modifications, Gene, is approved. Okay. All right. And I'll leave staff for trained in safety protocols. I mean, I don't think the whole staff is going to be trained, but Marsh and I are today by Mike. Okay. So. Yeah, okay. Well, that's, yeah. that'll be an ongoing process, too. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. Is it necessary to put this phase one reopening plan with amendments or with changes in printed form? Yes. Yes. So can yeah. you do, can, Jean, will you do that and then send it to us? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. saying if it's not in writing, it never happened. Right. <laughs> and Thank then you. I'll write, maybe write draft for phase two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And, and again, uh, as I think everybody keeps saying that uh, this is going to be flexible. People are going to be changing. We're going to get more information and, mm -hmm. you know, Hopefully it goes forward and everybody pays attention and you know, this thing is less of a problem. You know? Yeah. So, okay. And, uh, you know, and we'll talk about, uh, you think about uh, the furniture moving around. I mean, that's kind of the stuff that I'm focused on. So, yes, and you know, um, poor Catherine Delea. <laughs> hey, well, you know. I got that grant for her to paint the room and, and display art, so... I know, I, did, know. I heard from the Cultural Council and they basically, because we had two grants from them, they're like, whatever happens, you know, we'll, you know, delays are fine. So yeah. I'm going to assume NAID will be, because technically you're supposed to spend the money before the end of the year. Right. But I'm going to assume I'll probably be hearing from them as well that this can be okay. delayed. So, and, you know, let's see where we're at, you know, two or three months from two, you know, you could in fact paint the room two or three months from now and still you know, meet those deadlines. Uh, let's see where we're at. Uh, you know, we're going to be flexible. We're going to adjust <laughs> on the fly. But you are anyway. Oh, <laughs> certainly not shown until there are people in the library to look at it. So we yeah. have something. I know. The thing is, she yeah, wanted to get in exactly. and paint it while there's nobody here, but that's just not even. I have paint samples that she wanted you guys to vote on. Yeah, but okay. This not going to happen. All right. Um, okay. All right. It's, Anything else on uh, on the reopening and? Did anybody else sign up for any of the workshops or webinars? I, I did the webinar on Friday. Uh, one on working uh, together and planning policy and all that with the. Yeah, lawyer. that was the one the American Library Association did for East, yeah. using East Lansing, Michigan as the yes. model. Um, basically, we we just had the same conversation uh, that. Yeah, you know, they they talked about it. So, you know. and again, their key thing was that every everything was changing. Considering they were writing plans, and then more information became av available, and they were rewriting plans, and it was just this continuous, ongoing process. So, and I guess that's where we're all at. So. Yeah, I signed up to watch it recorded, not to watch it live. Yeah, I, I did it live. Uh, you're better off doing it recorded. So, yeah. So, Eugene, did you want to talk? The other writing we had on the agenda was the, um, the EV charging station, the electric vehicle. vehicle charging I know, station. and I I didn't get anything obviously until I just this meeting started, so I didn't really see how we could discuss it much. Well, the the thing he just sent, I just looked at the thing he sent us, and it really is it's a cell piece. It's not anything different from what he was saying. Figures we had, the, the numbers haven't shifted at all. It's still eighty. 
the number is. If you give me a yeah. it's right. Yeah, and I didn't hear from Lori, you know, because she was going to try and put me in touch with libraries and things. So. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I guess Jean, Dick, and I did participate in the discussion with National Grid in their um, electrical uh, engineering outfit uh, uh, to talk about this uh, last week and. Uh, I think it's a great idea. I think uh, as Dick repeated a couple of times and I've kind of got the comments stuck in my head, it's the optics at this point that uh, um, for me anyway, going forward, uh, I think our, our focus and for me, our focus and attention should be on dealing with the reopening of the library. As good as it is to have charging stations on site, uh, time and resources and is I think there was a, a cost to the town. We had to put up about $8,000, if I remember, whether it's us or the town. Um, the payment for people utilizing these uh, charging stations, uh, there would have to be an accounting process with the town, or they would have to hire somebody um, to handle the accounting of it. So, uh, and there really has been no thing with the town. So to now introduce this kind of a discussion with them while they're trying to deal with COVID, I think really, uh, I don't think it would you know, be beneficial. I think it's something we want to look at long term, but in the short term, I don't think uh, it's my the total, the total cost is about 45K for installation right. for a setup. And then there are incentives that both the electric company and the state has. Uh, although the state one is is unachievable, but if you apply for it, then the electric company kicks in, and so that reduces the cost to about eighty seven hundred bucks or something like that, eighty five hundred uh, eighty five hundred bucks. But when we talked about optics. The issue is we don't know where our budget's going to be. Right. Right. The tax revenues are are in the toilet, and and um, towns are going to be gasping for air, and the incentives run out at the end of June. June yeah. So we would have to apply by June 1st. And that's the optical problem is it's really hard to know how to argue even for among ourselves if we use our state aid funds or whatever funds we want to, you know, whatever funds we want to use from our kitty, how to, how to do that when we may need to protect the library's fundamental budget in whatever onslaught we may be awaiting, which is unknown to us. That's the problem. Yeah. And then the question that I had was, is this our money, you know, to do with us? We want or do we go to the town and say, this is a project for the town. We're going to house it and try to get the town to invest. So, so, you know, there's just a lot of politics involved in this that I am cloudy on myself. Is that a fair assessment, Dick? Of what? Uh, yeah, it is. You're well said. Well said. I know, Gene, you want to charge your head, not charge your head with this. You're, you're, this is, you're passionate about this and I, and I, I can appreciate it. Yeah, but I told you on a cloudy day, <laughs> I'm not as high in the sky, and it's cloudy today. Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, but you know, I think the, the, the time and energy um, is best put into reopening, which is going to be challenging enough. Yeah, challenging and if, enough. I, if I knew that, if I didn't know that Martha Taylor has so much on her plate right now, oh, and yeah. she's so backed up. I, I might feel a little bit more encouraged, but she would really be a, our ally. And I, you know, to dump something more on her is, would just yeah. be. And, and, and I think going forward, this is something, you know, we can be working on. I think Dick's made the point a number of times in terms of, of trying to work on a five year plan that uh, we become more energy efficient uh, through the library and become uh, a representative uh, model for that kind of activity. Uh, so I, I think that's the dialogue and discussion we want to keep having. Having uh, We want to work with Martha in terms of um, getting the town certified as a green as part of the Green Community Act, which then opens up resources to the town for these kinds of projects. You know? So I think those are the good, put our time and energy into that. And, and I love the concept because I, I take pictures of charging stations every place I go. I've got them at Framingham State. I've got them in a garage in St. Petersburg, Florida. I, they had almost a, a half of a floor. I've got pictures of them all over the place. I've got pictures of trash cans. I get pictures of uh, hot benches, you know, manhole covers. So I, I take all kinds of weird stuff. So yes, um, but yeah, the, my most recent one has been the, uh, 
electric charging stations. And, and the the location, um, Alex, because you were in the, in the initial meeting, is much more efficient. They want to place it's a it's it's a two 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 car unit, so it's four chargers out of two units. And it would be in, in parking spaces that are, are right at the beginning of the parking lot as you come down Lawn Street. So you would feed not through sidewalk and into the building to a right. panel of install, but directly to the pole. Yeah. Right. yeah. So the ones right, right the, the parking spaces facing John Ashman's house. Yeah. Right. That kind of the first four that spaces is. there. Much more efficient than. Uh, and putting them on the other side. My in my mind, I thought they were putting them where the handicapped spaces were, and that just is fraught with all kinds of underground issues there because that's where the septic system is in the legion yep. field. So, uh, but so, still, postponement is in line. No, I, I would think so. I would think oh, so. Yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. and it's a kindness to the Commonwealth as well because you won't be reaching for those um, subsidizing funds. And the Commonwealth, as Dick points out, yeah. along with um, all the jurisdictions. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's a national problem. As you know, we live in a blue state, so we don't have a federal government well disposed to helping blue states. Yeah. So, so this is going to be an extremely challenging time, both personally, financially, and for, for the yeah. state. So just no, nice. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Later. Yeah, as we said, if we if we were if we're level funded for next year, I'm going to consider that a touchdown. I would be stunned. Yeah, I you know that would be absolutely amazing. We can stay whole uh, and not really have to impact on uh, people and what we do. Incom is meeting tomorrow night at seven, just so you know. Okay. I believe they're going to establish the budget. The budget. I believe, I believe they would have to. Yeah. yeah. Okay. I, yeah, although I don't, it doesn't say joint with selectmen, which I thought they usually do, but everything's different. So right. we could join by Zoom if we wanted. Yes. Okay. All yes. right. Uh, anything else that anybody wants to discuss? No. Okay. Can I uh, get a no, Margaret? I want to say personally, it's a pleasure working with all of you. I mean, this is a very weird way to be working together, and it's you know, and it's 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 been a very positive experience zooming together and trying to solve these problems. And I, I oh, likewise, I, I appreciate everybody's effort and time, and you know, and continue to be safe. And especially you. seeing all the work that you're doing and the work that your staff is doing, but you know, uh, invisible to us uh, means yeah. a lot. Same here. Margaret. I make a motion that we adjourn the meeting. Okay. Do you want to set a date for another? The only thing that I think may come up is budget stuff. So um, early June might be a good it might be a good idea to meet in early June. Okay. Okay. Fine. Um, what about the Tenth. Oh, which 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 day do you all prefer? Tuesdays. Town meeting is the ninth. Town meeting is the twenty third. Oh, what am I saying? I didn't scratch that out here. The week before this week in June. I I couldn't understand that. You want to do the the, the first week in June? I think so. Um, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that would be good. Okay. Uh, and any day works since not doing anything else. If, if you want to do Margaret, the, Margaret the, other, the other one yeah. really working. So I, so 11, like, so this worked on Monday, but it's this time doesn't work on Tuesday or Wednesday. Okay, you want to do, do a different the, time. I could do afternoon, but I don't know about the rest of you. Okay. My mornings uh, are pretty booked. Okay. You want does Monday the first work for you, Margaret? Mm hmm At this time. At this time. Yep. Good. So Monday the first mm -hmm. at eleven. Okay. All right, okay. Okay. We had the motion to adjourn. 
second, somebody? Abel. Terry has seconded, okay, all in favor? There it goes, it's unanimous, we're going to adjourn. <laughs>